I kind of remember like, I don't feel like I was really in my body, but I feel like watching myself. I feel like I remember watching myself. I was like, whoa. And I just didn't know what was happening, really. The first day, I, my stomach started hurting, so I asked my parents if I could stay home from school, right? Finley had developed what we thought was a fever virus, and his temperature was getting up to 103, 104. And I went home, I stayed home that like whole week in my bed, in my parents' bed. And then my stomach started really, really hurting. And I was crying a lot. I never went to the hospital, so I was kind of scared of what would happen. His breathing began to get very laborsome. And by early Sunday morning, they had thought he developed pneumonia. His lungs had filled with fluid. And so he was hallucinating and his chest was concaving because he couldn't breathe. By Sunday night, a team of nurses rushed in and had to rush him to the PICU. Coming to the hospital for the first time can be a really scary experience. Everyone is just working together to help support these patients and families who are going through the worst day of their life. I feel like it was just yesterday. I remember Finn very clearly, a red-haired, beautiful boy. One of the PICU doctors came in and said, we're gonna evaluate him and within the next two hours, we will know if he needs to be put on a ventilator. And it was not two minutes of her getting that out that she was like, we need your help. Can you help us make him comfortable? He needs to swallow the tube. We need to start the process now. His lungs don't have time. In this COVID world, you get so scared of ventilators and everything. And that's kind of how we were feeling at that moment. And then I remember kind of I didn't even know that I was in it until I like started realizing stuff. You woke up? Yeah, I woke up. What did you start realizing? I didn't really know that I was on a ventilator. And then I was like, it's kind of like, where am I and stuff. And then I, they told me like a day after I think that I was on one. And then yeah. Did you know what a ventilator was? No, I didn't. You know, remember that moment where you're like essentially kind of grappling with, all right, we're we're here at the bottom. She said what he has is MISC, it's multiple inflammatory syndrome in children, and it's a post-COVID disease that we're seeing in children. We didn't even know he had COVID, so we were kind of shocked by it. We never even heard of MISC. I got tested for COVID, had to get like my blood drawn and then said I had like, what's it called, COVID? It's like- COVID antibodies. Antibodies. I didn't even know what that was. <laughs> Were you surprised that you had had COVID and didn't know it? Yeah. Why it happens, we really just don't know. These antibodies start affecting all the organs in your body. He really was very impressive because despite being very obvious that he was so sick and like, you know, really struggling to breathe and everything, he was, so pumped up about the Chiefs game that was on that evening. There was new sets of battles that we had to overcome, yeah. like him speaking, him being able to sit up, things like that. But because we had been so encouraging to him, like, Finn, you will live, you will fight. One of his first words were, I will live. I really wanted to focus on increasing his mobility in the PICQ and challenged him to shoot hoops from his bed. Even though that basketball would drop a little short, I encouraged him and just told him to keep practicing because the stronger he got, the better he would get as well. It was such a different experience within the, the PICU. The doctors there are, I don't know how else to describe it, but they're kind of like Jedis. It was such a, it was like relief I mean, I don't know how many people can say that, but it was like relief going to the ICU. Yeah. It was like, once we got there, we ah, felt like, okay, his body can rest. Yeah. And the people were so, they were on him. I mean, they were just, it just takes a different type of person to work in that scenario. So intense. It's so intense. It was definitely a roller coaster ride. 
for us and for the family. And when you get kind of stuck in that situation, like you have to position yourself to be in a place of faith. And I even wanted, you know, going through everything, I was telling the doctors, I'm like, you guys are angels, man. Like the work that you guys are doing is, you know, like we get to see miracles happen through the works of your hands. And yeah. we were just so thankful. There is just so much being shot at everybody right now. And so it's, it's like your mind just wants to go to the worst place. And you forget that there are people that have been trained for the worst case scenario. They know what they're doing. And when you get there and you're around those people, you're like, ah, this can be dealt with. This is a good situation. And it was almost like a healing immediately began to start happening. They trust their nurses. I mean, it's a, it, it felt like we were with, like we were on a team. These are the situations where we need them as much as they need us. Like, you know, we all need to be a tight group and their faith in us. And if sometimes they believe in a higher power and miracles, like, you know, that happens along with whatever we as human beings can do. Finn had the best smile. Um, he has such a positive mindset and he is a fighter. He, um, you know, he really, I was really impressed. He just had an incredible support system. And I feel like that really helped with his motivation to keep fighting the way that he had been. Our job as parents were to stay in faith and their jobs were to be the hands essentially and do the work. And we had a group of angels around us that were just working on our kid. Yeah. We do know a little bit more about MISC two years now later from COVID than we did at that time, though honestly, I don't think anybody can fully understand and why some children have it and some don't. We personally don't want to be defined by this moment in our life. We don't want our son to. You're not the kid who almost died. You know, this is just part of our DNA is overcoming. Yeah. And that's what the world needs right now. We all just need to overcome.